What's up? This is Oz from Stew Liquor Music Review with the band Redstone Souls. Yeah. What's up, fellas? I'd like to have you guys introduce yourself and what instrument you play real quick. What's going on? I'm Travis. Play the drums. Uh, I'm Bo. I play guitar, do a little singing, and uh, play some keys also. I'm Ian, and I sing and play guitar. I'm Kevin, and I play the bass. All right, cool. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, man, no problem. Thanks for letting us do this in the green room at the machine yeah, shop. This just support the local music, you know, and like do what you guys do. It's awesome. Well, we appreciate it, man. The first question I wanted to ask you guys is what kind of, what genre do you play and what are your major influences as a band? Man, we, we come from a lot of different backgrounds. I mean, we all got our influences that we like, you know, the reasons we picked up guitars or played drums or bass in the first place, you know, but I mean, we all meet in the middle with, you know, anything... I don't know, anything from what, Black Sabbath to ELO and, you know, anything modern too, you know, we all got, I mean, Bo's a huge Beatles guy, I mean, ELO, I'm more, you know, Sabbath or Kiss or anything, just, you know, call it classic, but it's like not my fault that like most of the good music came out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what, um, like if you were to switch from your FM station to your CD player, what would be the first thing you would hear? Oh shit! I got Stone Souls. <laughs> right? Yeah, got <laughs> Stone Souls. We're, finish, right. we're finishing up the the CD, so it's yeah. like that's the only thing I've been listening to, like trying to mix it. But um, I got like three Grand Funk CDs in there right now. I'd say. Oh, nice, nice. Some Mark Farmer. Oh yeah. All definitely. right. Yeah. So I um, got to meet really cool guy. So down to earth. Yeah, Mark Farmer is a good dude. Yeah, it's cool. So to um, with the new, is it EP or full length? Oh gosh. We don't really want to call it an EP, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a session. Yeah, we're not calling it. We're not calling it an EP. We put a little bit more work into it than that. So you know, we'll just say it's a nice little session that we decided to throw down on a CD. Okay, who who did you guys use to record it? Oh man, it was recorded everywhere. <laughs> Started at Harmony Park, went to uh, Silver Dragon Studios, kind of pieced it all together, and it was salvaged by a guy we've worked with in the past, uh, Andy Paddlin over at the Loft. He has a studio in Celine and uh, oh, cool. Shelby Township and stuff, and. He's magic, so he saved okay. he saved our ass. Did you guys send it out to get mastered anywhere specific? Oh, he just does it right there really? at the loft. Yeah. Oh, that's he's impressive. Master, he produces. He's a musician. He actually uh, played guitar and sponge, so he like he's got the ear for it too, and he just knows what we're going for. So it always goes smooth when we work with him. Sweet. So you guys have been together for a year, I heard before this. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. This probably about a year, year and two months. So yeah, a year. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. And uh, do you have any? Do you have an EP before this one, or do you just have? You, is this the first thing you've recorded professionally? As a, as our lineup. I mean, we yeah. we were in the nines. Yeah. We so. we played in the nines for a while. Um, before this band, we had another drummer, and then like Bo was uh, pretty much he tagged on like right at the end of the nines. Then we kind of yeah. just switched gears. We got a new drummer and. We kind of decided to start fresh, start new, and write new songs, and just do it from the bottom up, you yeah. know. So, did so, so long story long, we used the nine songs as our EP up until this point. Okay, cool. We took the three that we still played, you know, and like we had nine songs on that original one for the nine, you know, whatever. But uh, <laughs> we still play three songs off that CD. Okay, so, cool. So, I mean, we wrote them. If they're ours, you know, it was Kevin and I when in that three piece. You know, now we're just, you know change the name and the sound changed so much when we added another guitar and Travis's style like it was so different I mean gears. yeah it really added a different aspect I mean with your background you know it's like yeah. changed a lot so so your background what kind of bands have you, have you played in before I played uh, more metal uh, just recently um, Kevin actually hit me up a year ago said you know I need a drummer our drummer bailed on us and I seen him two weeks prior and was like this is epic this is great you know like even though I'm not really in that kind of a band it'd be cool to be in that so when they gave me the offer just kind of jumped all over it and it's it's epic i don't know what to say you know oh. it's a harder rock bluesier rock it's just surreal and the best part it's appeals to all generations you know what i mean and it's something that you can make a living off of did you sell your double bass no absolutely not i still use it <laughs> great great give it a little energy to the set that's cool man so we can get heavy you know we're we call ourselves blues, I guess, but I mean, it's the heaviest blues around, you know? Hey, that's so cool. We get categorized in stoner rock all the time. Like, all these <laughs> stoner rock magazine, like, this and these reviews, it's like, oh man, stoner rock, the sword. Like, you know, we, we uh, 
of the reviews we got on this new one so far, it goes, it was 22% said we sound like Led Zeppelin, the other 22% uh, said we sound like Rage Against the Machine. Really? I'm like, the riffs and stuff, I guess, when it comes That's to That's awesome. That. Like, it's a pretty yeah. wide uh, like, range, yeah, though. Yeah, from. Alright, that's kind of weird. Those are the two, the two highest percentages out of like over 100 and something reviews. Okay, that's sweet. So, are you guys planning on going on a tour for this session you're coming out with? Yeah, I mean, we've all been grinding away at doing our part. I mean, you just booked up a couple more today. Yeah, I mean, we're we're trying to get out for the whole month of November, and we're literally still booking. I know it's kind of like, I mean, what's November in like five days or something? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a little Midwest thing, you know, and we're doing it all ourselves. You know, we're not really going through anyone else. we got a couple contacts that we've, you know, I mean, we blasted probably 100 emails out every other week, you know? Okay, yeah. And... I hate to say it, but like 85, 90% of them come back like, sorry, you know, nothing lines up. 90% of them don't even respond. Yeah. And then you send out yeah. more, and then you get this 10% that actually respond. And of the 10% that respond between bands and venues, you know, then you get one show out of 20 emails. And you know what I mean? It's just a grind. <laughs> yeah, doing this, it is the, this is the first time we're, you know, going out on the, I mean, that's the first time any of us have gone on tour. And to do it ourselves is going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a test, and it's probably going to be tough. But, I mean, shoot, there's only one way to find out if we're going to actually make this work, do it the hard way first you know yeah. get your hands dirty spend your own money and hopefully something comes so back we'll man your jobs whatever you know we'll be gone all of november so yep. uh, eight through uh what 20 24th right now then we're gonna go come back for thanksgiving and stuff yeah and then we're going back up to chicago okay kevin's working yeah. from the road which is sweet because he has a good job so we gotta use yeah. it there you go there you go he's the only job one of the group sorry yeah. so do you guys a magazine he's like a, these guys are freelance electricians over here <laughs> like <laughs> So do you guys have to quit your jobs for this tour? Or? Yeah, I guess if I mean what you you are quitting and then he's gonna hire you back hopefully. Right. I'm, or is he just I, telling I have you to that? take a leave of absence so I can't screw him with the whole uh, unemployment? So yeah. Then yeah. I'm coming back and he said he'd cut. You know, he's like, give me a call. We'll see what happens. Hey, that's if a cool. That's a cool boss though. Yeah. yeah if you come back, let's see. Let's hope you guys blow up, right? So when you go on this tour, what kind of vehicle are you taking? How are you guys packing in a? Yeah, we got uh, a fan and a trailer. I mean, yep. just like Standard what, what you think. trailer combo, you know. <laughs> somewhere to sleep and somewhere to do whatever else we do in there. Do you sleep in the van or are you guys going to yeah, get rooms? We're be prepared to, Probably, we're, but yeah. there's this awesome resource. What is it, couchsurfing.org or .net or something? No, we've been taking lessons from Kevin. He's really good at You can sleep anywhere. <laughs> So it's, it's just just sitting up in a passenger seat, so I don't understand it. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, we could probably just tour in like a fucking sedan. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that website? There's just random people yeah, like, hey, like, you guys hey, can yeah, come crash right. with yeah, us. We'll smoke some weed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we just, I mean, we've, we've booked a lot of these shows on this tour, like a show for a show ordeal with like another band, you know? So it's like, we can offer them, a, you know, a good crowd any, you know, in a lot of cities around here from Detroit, if they want to do Detroit or Flint or Lansing, Ann Arbor, like we, we draw pretty well all around, you know? So okay. it's like, if they're hip to like one of those places, it's like we can give them a place to stay and get them some gas money and you know get them food and beer for the night or whatever, and that's all we ask for, you know. That's so sweet. I can say we're at least making a hundred dollars and we're getting food and beer at every show on the road, <laughs> so that should cover a lot. Hey, that's you know? cool. Gas and some food, man. We got merch, and then you know hopefully we don't spend any of our own money. That's the plan, you know. Hey, that'd be that'd be impressive really if you guys came back. In the yeah, black, man. Rich, yeah, but we're freaking trying to just not spend, not cost us anything. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get your you gotta get your nose out there. That's okay. bottom line. It's just so, easier and easier every time we do it now, you know. Exactly. Um, I wanted to ask: Is there anything like from the road, like traveling to a show, like a funny thing that's happened, like a trailer blows and it oh, like jackknifes or something? What do you? Nothing crazy like that. You happened freaking on that Cleveland weekend. That was a freaking whirlwind, though. Driving yeah, through. no, things were pretty smooth. I know, it was great. <laughs> Seriously. Shoot, I mean, the crazy... So, I we mean, did you find... Drink, you drink, like, 12 liters of Fireball that weekend. <laughs> that, that was pretty bad. Was and then, bad. you know... Our friends, legal immigrants, found one just, like, on the side of the road. Like <laughs> it was just a fucking crate of Fireball, one liters, 12 of them. Are you serious on the side of the road? Oh, my God. Like, there's a festival going on, and then it was, like, 4 in the morning, and it was all the tents were shut down. And oh, all, my no God. That's, like... It's a crate of Fireball sitting there. <laughs> That's awesome. So I haven't drank it since. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the best memory you have from, like, a live show? Like, someone yeah. falling down, busting their head open, or someone yeah. throwing their bra up on stage, or... Gosh, a lot of that. I think it, what, probably just the good shows that we played here, man. Like, yeah. just being in front of a sold-out machine shop or something like that, those are some of my best memories, honestly. I mean, what about you guys? Um, I think our biggest show was the one in Ann Arbor, where oh, we yeah. brought party buses full of our own fans, 200-plus people, 
and uh, that was intense to walk out Shoot, see that again. many you know loved ones that are there for us and jumped on a bus and we got them drunk and it was just you know what can you say that's the best time to play it's the most fun you got that energy feeding back from the crowd and you just get put everything you have into that live set sure. yeah man so we made jello shots that barely solidified and like they tasted like candy and it was really? everyone was so freaking drunk it was just such a mess like <laughs> The first time we did party buses, we had like 300 people packed in this venue that like wasn't ready for a band. Like they didn't know what to expect. Like we brought the PA in, and like it was just down in Ann Arbor, like the Millennium Room. It's like a dance club basically, but it was like <laughs> this promoter wanted to do it and this and that. We're like whatever, we'll bring the PA and we'll Sweet. do it. Play with a band from Chicago called Soleil Moon. So try to you know give them a good crowd. We ended up fucking couldn't even put another person in this place. Oh really? You sold it out? Oh yeah, it was freaking uh, nuts. So. <laughs> so what's the biggest band you say you've played for as of like to date? Gosh. Oh, man, Pretty much any time we played here, right? Yeah. Like Fuel, Taproot, um Slash Slash at Common Ground. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. I mean technically yes. <laughs> you you guys played that pretty badass pavilion stage, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That GM pavilion or whatever. And it didn't rain, we were like, okay, if it rains they'll all come over here and we're like it's sunny as time. <laughs> Sweet monster truck was there. Yeah. They're sweet. <laughs> was anyone on stage at the main stage while you guys were playing, or were you in between? So a lot of people trickled over. I think. Uh, I think it was kind of. It was probably you know. 15 minutes of our set was like everybody was there, and then the people were piling in when we were getting off stage, and they were like, "We heard you guys from far away. We were walking up, and it sounded awesome. So that was cool. It was like a metal, awesome, put together stage, so it really directed the sound good. So like you didn't really get too much bleed. I don't think you know. Mm -hmm. So this is your session release party that's pretty yeah, good exactly. big deal and uh what what bands are you playing with for uh the fans of stew liquor so they can look them we got up the too. mugs from detroit are uh, right before Sick us band. awesome band good friends of ours great people i mean if you haven't heard them check them out same with trip and dixie awesome friends of ours i mean we just put this together like just to oh, yeah. freaking have a good time all the people we jam with and like like to play with you know they're all yeah. working bands they all want to you know it's not like it's a hobby, it's a great hobby, but it's not, doesn't just stop there. You know, these are all freaking touring, working okay. bands, you know. Cool. Uh, legal immigrants came from Grand Rapids, friends of ours, that, uh, that whole fireball stuff going on. <laughs> that was uh, that weekend out there with them. So they got us a couple shows on the west side of the state, and now, you know, they're coming to Flint and playing with us, you know. It's just kind of making those relationships, you know. Yeah, that's sweet, man. Everyone here, man, it's freaking, you got to check them all out. <laughs> are, you, are you going on tour with any of those bands in November? Are you bringing them with you? Eventually, not eventually. Not this, like, not I mean, first one, we right. don't even we think we've covered all of our bases, but we don't even really know until we get out there. You know, we've yeah. tried to soak in as much as we you know can from all these bands that you know, we play with here or any touring band we support. You know, any okay. small or big or anything. You know, just try and like trick them into telling you all their secrets, and then a lot of them are pretty open armed. You know, <laughs> okay. sending stuff over. So you get, would you guys consider yourself a drinking band or maybe a little of the weed or are you guys pretty straight laced? What's up with that? A lot of both. <laughs> <laughs> Not this kid. He's all, a drinker. He's a drinker. Beer, he's, just a, he's just definitely a, the drinking type. We're definitely I mean. a drinking band, I'd say more than anything, but we dabble with, uh, you know, medicine. the devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we're in Michigan, you know, it's, it's medicine. Man. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt, man. So um, have any of your songs from this new e uh, session been on, like, a radio or? Um, we haven't. This, we haven't really sent it out too much right now. We're kind of just kicking it off tonight. We've we've played some of the stuff, uh, some of the free releases we had. What did we put? We, it was uh, Tap Detroit. Yeah, we went to Tap Detroit. Tap Detroit. Yeah. Tap Detroit's a good station. Yeah, I like for it. sure. Well, that's sure. cool. Um, so is this... Are you guys doing this session to kind of see where it goes? And then are you guys... Or do you guys already have something, a bigger picture? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah. shoot, when it comes to playing, I mean, we play every single weekend, and when it comes to songwriting, you know, it doesn't stop. You know, a lot of our songs are like, we jam them at practice, we're like, oh, that was cool, let's try to play it tomorrow, and then we, like, hurry up and get it done, and we're like, all right, now we should probably sit back and, like, is this going to be what we're going to jam, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. So, I mean, that's, you have to play it out, you know? I wanted, wanted to get back, I wanted to get back to the fundamentals of the band, like, oh, where okay. you start writing the music, and, like, do you start with guitar parts? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's funny if you look at the cover of our album, it's, uh, it's actually my backyard, and that's pretty much where we wrote, I mean, pretty much all the songs. You know, it starts, Ian and I, you know, I'll give him a call, or I'll, like, 
be driving in the car and I'll like call him real quick and I'm like I got this riff in my head and I'll start humming to him he's like oh I got lyrics for that you know and and we always have drums set up so like if I got something in my head he sits down on the drums and kind of gives me a little beat and we're like all right cool let's try to get this for when Travis and Kevin get here and then we're more excited than ever to hear them get on there and Kevin starts playing the bass and Travis plays the drums and I'm like we just did this in one day you know so we just want to be able to put ourselves like we we would love to live with each other so that this could kind of be like what we do every day because I mean it, it just goes so smooth when we get together that's that's like the best feeling you know at least we're down the street from each other and these two yeah. live together so at yeah. least two we're two and two you know so we okay. just gotta commute and you know it works out good that way but it'd definitely be ideal to have a space you know <laughs> yeah no doubt um when you when you who writes the lyrics Primarily, is it you, say, the lead singer? I would say Bo and I probably write mo the most of the lyrics yeah. and the guitars, and then we bring it to the table, and I just go, Kevin, this song's in A. Uh, this is what I got, I think, and then it's just like, right. then he we writes all, all the bass line, and we all... Yeah, we all just kind of just yeah. throw down ideas, like we all listen to it, right. or it's like, after we Record got our on the final phone, draft, yeah. you know, and then we're all just like, all right, what can we change to make this better? And we all just kind of hit it and just listen to it over and over, and just little changes here and there, and... There we go, you know. Yeah, I mean, we don't, and then we don't really stick to our parts. Like, I don't just sit there and only do guitar. He doesn't just sit there. I mean, he'll be like, "Hey, what if you tried, you know, doing this behind that?" And then it'll kind of trigger Kevin's idea. And Trevor's like, "Kevin's like, yeah, I have, you know, this to bring up." So it's really, it's kind of everybody when it all gets together. You know, it starts with us, and then we bring it to the table, and it just boom, masterpiece. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> masterpiece. Always gotta feel like the next thing's better. You know, it's like yeah. it's like you always get excited. So, <laughs> so when you guys when you guys write the lyrics, what do you? Like, what are the meanings? Where do they come from? Oh, man. It could be anything. Like, anything, a my experience, a, a friend's experience, something I read. Like, I mean, it's yeah. just, you don't just limit it. Nothing I couldn't, like, you know, relate to or understand, obviously, but it's not like it had to happen to me. It's not like, us, you know, yeah. you would think, like, people are like, oh, man, do you, like, do you, like, hate your girlfriends? I'm like, what is that what you think, like, all the songs are about? I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, we're a little deeper than that, I think. Like, <laughs> Well, just think about you know just whatever you're feeling you know okay if you're sad you write yeah, a sad not, song if, i know you're not always you're not always living your shoes you know i mean you're, you got to think about what everyone else is like what's what's going through their head their head when they're listening to it so that, that's kind of i guess the biggest part of it it's not just like oh yeah i had this really crazy dream so i wrote it it's like no man it's just all it's experiences you know I mean, ours you know, that's, that's happened yeah, I said. That's <laughs> But that's, yeah, I mean, it's just like I like songs that you can interpret like many different ways. Like anyone, if you can like a bunch of people can relate to it, then it's like, who knows what it's about? It's like whatever you want it to be about. That's <laughs> you know sweet, I man. So I wanted to ask you about like the Michigan music scene right now. Where do you think it's at, and where do you think it could be, and what do you guys think about what we're trying to do for it? Hmm. One word. Uh, I don't know. Probably lacking. Yeah. I'd say. At, not not what you're doing. We're talking <laughs> about the music scene. <laughs> He's You're like, helping though. This, I mean, this stuff. This is no, what it need, takes, you know. Yeah, we need someone like you know something like what you guys are doing because I mean, we're we're up there singing it. You know, people people are gonna rock out to that, but they need someone who's like actually down earth and can be like, this this band's getting it. This band's not. You know, I mean, it's like you read a bunch of reviews on a bunch of bands. It's the same type of thing. You know, we need someone who's like actually doing like the legwork alongside with us, like you guys are doing. You know, so that's I mean, it's we take advantage of any time we can do something like this just so that we can like let people know, yeah. you know, what actually goes down. Great, we so appreciate like that. Gateway, that. You know? like when, you're, when you're starting a band, it's like it's the hardest thing to like find people. Like when you're a teenager, now like when, especially when you become an adult, you're like, we need, we're, we're really trying to do this shit. So like, you got to put some time into it. This is gonna be like a second job. So yeah, it is a job, like, man. These yeah. guys like work all day, nine to five, and then they come and do this, and then I put in twenty hours a week doing the band thing. You know what I mean? It's like I work for a magazine and do my own fucking hours. I'm up all night anyway, so it's like doesn't matter to me. It's like perfect schedule for me. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't mean, gosh. It's like it's a it's a full time thing, you know what I mean? And it's like we don't we want to work with people like Trip and Dixie. Adam's in the room right here. Say hey, Adam. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like bands that are out there like working, you know what I mean? Like there's not enough bands that can just get out there and like are actually gonna promote a show and actually gonna try and live it. And you know, like just I mean, fuck, that's how we dress every day. You know what I mean? It's like people like fucking get off the golf course and go throw on their fucking rock clothes and it's a lifestyle, you know what I mean? man. Like and and say like oh, and their mom drops them off at the show or something. It's like. <laughs> So, so I, wa I wanted to give I wanted to give each and every one of you a chance to say thank you maybe to your fans or s give them a message. Yeah, so. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, you know. Yeah. So appreciate you know, support. right? Mutual understanding. Thank you, thank you. And we all love my parents because they let us oh, jam yeah. in my basement, oh, and she always oh. makes us food. So that's yeah, like. Even today, she's like, you boys want some quesadillas? I'm like, hell yeah, I want quesadillas. In like four minutes, I'm like, oh, that was kind of weird, but I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that was fast.
<laughs> All right, guys, you heard it from them, the Redstone Souls, and this is Stu Lickin' Music Review. We'll see you later.